I hope you can see this slide now for an overview. We'll start with the presentation of the project itself um, from myself and uh, my colleague Siddhartha Prakash um, before entering a short panel discussion together with the um, partners in RAM from Centrum Pharmaceuticals, JSK, Novartis, Sanders, and the Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation before, as said, opening uh, for a Q&A session uh, facilitated by our partner, Brandon Shaw of uh, Shawview Consulting. Um, let me start with an overview. RAMP, the responsible antibiotics manufacturing platform, is a collaboration between different stakeholders, different um, types of players, and I would say pioneers who voluntarily collaborate around um, antibiotics manufacturing with the objective to reduce the emissions of antibiotics to the environment um, and in that way, reducing the risk of antibiotic resistance. So as you are interested in this field, I assume most of you are also aware that there are, of course, many drivers for, for AMR, for antimicrobial resistance. Um, and this project is specifically about the manufacturing effluents and how they contribute uh, to uh, AMR risks and how also then this can be mirrored on the demand side and uh, providing the enabling ecosystem that actually promotes responsible manufacturing practice. Um, this partnership has been growing over the past couple of years uh, with CV and Swedish Waterhouse working in the, in, the, in the space between both ends, between supply and demand side. We've had a long collaboration with the UN initiative on Sustainable, sustainable procurement in the health sector and many other procurers in Europe and the Nordics, also growing network of low and middle income countries where we see num uh, questions being asked, but not really having the tools at hand to, uh, to incentivize what people would like to see. And on the other hand, we see, for example, in the AMR Industry Alliance, a voluntary industry collaboration the work on voluntary standards, a, the common antibiotics manufacturing framework to, to go ahead and voluntarily define how the industry would see or define responsible antibiotics manufacturing. And in this dialogue, Centrine Pharmaceuticals from the Netherlands has been one of our partners and friends from the first hour. And over time, others have joined like GSK, GlaxoSmithKline, Novartis and the generics branch um, Sandoz. Over time, we teamed up and were introduced to other stakeholders working in this field. For example, our now even uh, closest project partners, Shavi Consulting, and not least, not only a donor, but also a very active stakeholder in this whole project setup um, and funding half of the project and having very driving in the whole design of the project, the Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation. But what you see here in this, in this logo is actually uh, ramp in a nutshell, where, where the challenges that the, the improvements that ultimately need to happen on the manufacturing level um, will not happen by itself. Although there are voluntary initiatives right now, it needs to be mirrored by incentives, by support, demand on the purchasing side, on the other side of the market. But these incentives are not really in place yet. And to make this wheel that you see uh, as part of this logo, to make this wheel spin, we need to fill in the, the gaps there, which is especially the flow of information of how actually um, responsive manufacturing is implemented. What does it look like? And how can you showcase that you are actually complying with that? And then ultimately, there's also today quite a strong focus on end of pipe solutions that's partly driven. To, through the regulation that doesn't really promote uh, a deep dive into process design, but it's also a little bit promoted by the fact that the, the industry uh, has a challenge itself in, in the lack of transparency and information flow, where it's easier to say, okay, without looking into the details of the supply chain, at the end of the pipe, it's quite straightforward that something needs to happen. 
Um, but then on the other hand, what does it look like in, in detail? Um, need to be in the right window. Here you see a picture that is quite complex and I'll break it down to you, but I um, thought it's good showing this, what we're heading for um, as an overview. In, in a project design uh, kind of visualization from the left-hand side, what is the actual physical challenge that we want to address the emissions and the pollution with antibiotics uh, leading to increased risks of promoting AMR, ultimately the desired impact to reduce these emissions physically and prevent the risks of AMR. Um, so if we reduce it to that level, what we want to achieve, and this follows the sequence in a way of the basic uh, challenge, the baseline status quo of all these different areas, what does RAMP do? What's the output? What's the activity that the project will do? And uh, what do we want to achieve by, achieve by that? What do we want stakeholders to do? If you uh, design these kind of projects, it's ultimately an altered behavior you want to achieve. You want something to do something different. And when we look at the central level of really understanding what do we need to do, it's not that we really need to reinvent the wheel. There's a lot going on in terms of environmental monitoring. There are a lot of technical solutions available out there, but there is quite a lack of actually understanding the level of prevalence of antibiotics and AMR in the environment. There is even, if you compare it with the climate challenge, um, not as straightforward consensus on the science-based targets, um, because not least we got, we're talking about very low concentrations where we are approaching the detection limits of labs. And we're also talking about the very low concentrations where bacteria are exposed to a selective pressure where resistant bacteria is more advantages in reproducing than those who are not. And these are really, really low concentrations. So what we want to do is to bring together in a kind of marketplace approach, the solutions that are already out there, improve access of the stakeholders to the tools that they need. Um, but on the other hand, um, then also supporting stakeholders and implementing these to ultimately agree on what we would call harmonized criteria uh, in a consensus between the supply and demand side. But of course, this means that physically the change we want to achieve is on the manufacturing level. And again, it is about understanding the baseline. Do we have access and the information what the manufacturing reality is? Um, there might be some improved access uh, among the companies that are part of the AMR Industry Alliance, but to a large part of the global antibiotic supply chain, we have very little information about the realities and this we want to change and improve, of course, to be able to offer pilot interventions, learning cases, and also building a community of practice, sharing experience among those manufacturers on the ground where we need to implement this change so that ultimately we can scale and implement improved manufacturing practice. But as said, this needs to be mirrored by what is actually uh, requested or demanded from the market and other responsible stakeholders. And you see here that we are kind of following the same terms. It is again on the state of, uh, state of quo. Uh, it is about the uh, understanding where incentives are lacking or wrong incentives are actually provided. And on the other hand, um, we want to run comparable pilots to understand where the space for improvement is. Where can procurers ask questions? What happens if they ask specific questions? What kind of information do they receive? And how can they use that information to actually make an informed and uh, changed decision in their purchasing process um, to ultimately inform not only buyers, but then also a broader demand, say, demand side concept that could include regulation, investors. We see an increasing invest, uh, interest from in the investors community in this field. Um, but you can even think about uh, local banks providing loans to the factories who need a loan to, to improve in 
some specific technologies. So this all together builds the project ramp and they get this, this gray cloud in the background kind of defines the, 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 the system borders, if you want to call it like that, based on the starting point that the, the status quo is not in line with what we want to achieve, neither on the incentive side nor on the manufacturing side. Um, are we in line with what we want to achieve ultimately? And to get there, we use this kind of ecosystem approach and building an alliance of those voluntary pioneers who actually want to do something, who want to change something. Um, this means that these horizontal and vertical uh, uh, interaction between these different components is so critical to actually um, achieve this change. And this also brings me then to the last slide. Ramp is an open platform. It's a collaboration. Um, we are looking for more partners, for more companies to join, for donors to join, more procurers to join. And um, it really provides you with the opportunity to, to engage in the collaboration where you, uh, where you have the opportunity to shape the future of what competitiveness in this market will look like by the additional demand for responsible manufacturing. Um, and the focus is really on doing things, not reinventing the wheel where we don't need it. There are a lot of solutions out there. It's about collaborating to make things happen and to then support each other and support those who have less resources in actually implementing, scaling these harmonized criteria. That's enough from my end. Um, we'll now have the opportunity to hear more about what this manufacturing work and uh, the local work in, in India is one of the obvious manufacturing hotspots globally looks like. And I'll hand over to my colleague Siddhartha Prakash. Uh, I'll stop sharing here and I'll ask you to share your presentation. And again, if you have any questions, please use the chat. We'll get the during the Q&A session. Thank you. Thank you, Nikolai. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, so I'm leading the manufacturing work stream of RAM, which is looking at uh, manufacturing processes in India, which is one of the largest uh, manufacturing centers of antibiotics. And we have over the last couple of years working with um, our partners here and in India, uh, particularly in states like Maharashtra, Telangana and Karnataka, working with state governments, working with industry associations and working with companies directly um, doing some work to really analyze what is the situation on the ground, sensitizing uh, these stakeholders about the need for change and then starting pilot projects on the ground. So I will just briefly present some of our findings and our journey so far. So I hope you can all um, see my screen. Yes, thanks. So after engaging with a number of stakeholders in India, we realized that uh, implementing a manufacturing work plan in India would require looking at the entire manufacturing ecosystem. And so you need to begin inside the Sorry, Siddhartha, we can't hear right now. I think you happen to mute yourself. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, thanks. Thank you. So we are basically looking at, you know, what has to be done inside the factory, adopting the common antibiotic manufacturing framework, and then moving to the farmer parks where you have common in, uh, in effluent treatment plants and more companies coming together to uh, reduce pollution into the environment. And based on these practical experiences in the field, looking at developing state level AMR action plans, where we bring together the companies, uh, the industry pharmaceutical parks and the state governments to work together to address this problem from the grassroots up to the policy level. And how this works operationally is we are looking at the factory to do an assessment of the company's existing environmental management systems against the AMR industry common antibiotics manufacturing framework, and then identify areas for improvements to minimize emissions of these antibiotics into the environment. And a number of state governments are setting up pharma parks, so it's a very timely time 
for us to work together with them to develop guidelines for antibiotic waste management to promote sustainable manufacturing in the design of these new farmer parks. And then eventually uh, looking at the policy level to incorporate the sustainable antibiotic manufacturing practices into the design of the environmental component of the state AMR action plans. And the key stakeholders that we have been working with in this area are uh, people like in the central government, the Indian Council for Medical Research, the Environment Ministry, which has come, come together with UNEP to recently launch an AMR in the Environment Project. Uh, we're working with state governments in Karnataka, Maharashtra and Telangana, and particularly the Ministry of Commerce and Industry that is very supportive of this project and wants to really promote their states as sustainable anti-manufacturing hubs. Um, then moving to the industry associations, we have the Karnataka Drugs and Pharmaceutical Association in Bangalore, uh, the PSEI in Hyderabad, uh, and in Mumbai we have the TBIA, which is also supporting us in achieving sustainability on the ground level. And the companies we're talking to are the big uh, antibiotic manufacturers in India, which are Medrick, Centrion, Dr. Reddy's, Aurobindo, and many others. Uh, we're also working with scientists, such as the Indian Institute of Technology in Mumbai, the Birla Institute of Technology in Hyderabad, uh, and also working in collaboration with international agencies like uh, UNEP, WHO, World Bank, 2030 Water Resources Group, as well as some of the local government representatives from Europe, so the embassies of Switzerland, Netherlands, Sweden, Norway, and NGOs like the Center for Science and Environment in, in Delhi, which has done a lot of work to document pharmaceutical manufacturing practices across the country. Uh, so just to share with you some of the results that we've had. So recently the um, AMR Industry Alliance has done an assessment of 30 manufacturing sites of their member com companies and 91 suppliers. And what they found is that the majority of their own sites have been able to meet the framework and undertaken necessary corrective action to meet the PNEC standards. Um, the supply sides have some gaps which have been identified and uh, the companies are working with them closely to improve performance on the ground. Um, most of these corrective actions involve operational expenses rather than capital expenses. And this is an important point to note that it doesn't really have a lot of investment that is required to make the changes to be sustainable in the factories. And these corrective actions, as we've seen from our experience, um, can take somewhere between a few months to a more prolonged action, which might need three to five years to meet these PNEC standards. And um, we're very happy to present the findings of one of our first partner companies, Medric, which is a subsidiary of the Japanese firm, the Meiji Group. And this is a large formulations manufacturer in Bangalore that supplies antibiotics to GSK, Pfizer, Novartis, Sanofi, and six months ago, they were the first company to do as part of RAM, the uh, factory audits. And we're pleased to show you here that they have already implemented a lot of the recommendations that came out of the findings. Uh, for example, with the action plan to reduce amoxicillin discharge, um, they've all already started to implement measures, the actual mass of API removed from the equipment through dry vacuum cleaning to substantiate the antibiotic removal efficiency assumed in the mass balance calculation. Uh, dry cleaning practices have been adopted to minimize equipment rinse as much as possible with appropriate disposal. Uh, there's been a close monitoring of the productivity and the yield to ensure minimum amount of antibiotic discharge is into the ETPs. And they've also added sodium hydroxide to neutralize the antibiotic content at the effluent level and um, the level of periodic analysis of wastewater has been increased to monitor the discharge on the ground. So we see that it is very achievable, practical, and um, affordable to make these changes. Uh, this is a slightly complicated diagram, but again, it really goes back to what we're saying, how we're moving from the factory side, which is what you see on the left, towards the common effluent treatment plants at the farmer parks, and then moving towards, you know, having uh, sustainable guidelines developed at the end of the road to actually implement the learnings from this pilot into the policy design. And I'm pleased to inform you that um, already Karnataka and the Maharashtra government have begun to implement policies to support sustainable pharmaceutical production. 
Uh, in both these states, we have industrial policies which are supporting sustainable and green pharmaceutical manufacturing. They are funding factory audits, sewage treatment plants, common effluent treatment plants, and pharma parks. Um, as a result of the work that we have been doing together with our partners, the Maharashtra government has established a new AMR task force with a focus on responsible antibiotic manufacturing being led by the World Bank 2030 Water Resources Group and RAM. Uh, the Karnataka government has developed industrial wastewater multi-stakeholder platform that will now include pharmaceutical wastewater management in it. So the key project milestones that we are hoping to achieve are that the top antibiotic manufacturers in these two states implement measures at the factory level to meet global standards. We have the first pharma parks coming in India, which are going to be established with common effluent treatment plants that are designed to treat antibiotic residues in wastewater to meet the PNEC values. We have the first states to incorporate sustainable antibiotic manufacturing practices in state level AMR action plans. And with this, the pharmaceutical industry will be the pioneers in meeting the green global procurement standards and the national antibiotic residue monitoring standards that are on the anvil. So with that, I'll stop sharing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Siddhartha. And thanks for this overview. Um, and yeah, I can only um, uh, conclude that this local work is of course the, the critical part on implementing the physical change and getting to, to the local implementation. But on the other hand, let's now uh, open the panel um, with the project partners who I would like to ask to join and uh, switch their videos on successfully um, to look into how is the, like, how has this project partnership evolved and why, how, how's the logic in, um, in this partnership so that not only a local factory would join here, but uh, from a development agency to different pharmaceutical brands and different types of companies of this market, um, understanding how this partnership works. Um, and I'll introduce the panel one by one. Let's start with Alba Tali from uh, Centrin Pharmaceuticals, uh, Sustainability Director and head of the Sustainable Antibiotics Program. Centrin has really been one of the partners of the first hour of this project. Um, after, uh, or over the course of the past two years, I would say, then the, the next company to join uh, was GSK, GlaxoSmithKline, where I'm happy to welcome Paul Barnett, uh, Director of Environment, Health, Safety and uh, Sustainability. Um, and the third and fourth company partner in, in RAMP is uh, uh, Novartis, together with the generics branch uh, Sandos, today represented by Jutta Helstern of uh, the head of water resources at Novartis. Um, and last but not but least, also very happy to, of course, have our main donor uh, on board for the Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation, SDC, Andreas Steiner. Thank you all. Thanks for joining. And uh, let me start. Thanks for joining us in RAMP. Um, Alba, maybe to start with, um, Alba, uh, uh, sorry, Centrind is a brand that a consumer or patient would not necessarily recognize in the pharmacy or anything like that. You're producing the active pharmaceutical ingredients that then are supplied to, to other parts of the supply chain. So how does this approach of RAMP fit into what uh, Centrin is doing in terms of responsible antibiotics manufacturing? Yeah, so thank you very much, Nikolai. So maybe it's helpful to first introduce very briefly uh, Centrin Pharmaceuticals. Um, so as Nikolai mentioned, we're a B2B manufacturer. So that means we make active pharmaceutical ingredients um, and also their precursors, so antibiotic intermediates, um, APIs and intermediates. Um, we've been in business making the same antibiotics for over 75 years. So actually we were one of the first companies to produce penicillin at scale um, after World War II. So that's a little bit of our, our, our history. So we're, we're very much attached um, to this business and, and to these products. We make them in a sustainable, environmentally sustainable manner, uh, both in Europe where we have sites, 
but also in India, China, and Mexico, where we have our, our own facilities too. So um, a number of years ago, about five, seven years ago, we were faced with a problem, which is that there was increasing attention, uh, reports and investigations on this issue of AMR from manufacturing. And so um, we found this very troubling um, and we wanted to make sure um, that, uh, you know, we as a company, but also as an industry, we're doing um, as much as possible to fight this issue. So we were very keen to work with other companies to set up the first industry standards for manufacturing of antibiotics. Um, but we knew that that was simply not enough, that the only way we could solve this issue is essentially through collaboration with other sectors. Um, so along with Nikolai, uh, we started talking um, about a partnership and dreaming of how could we bring in other partners um, to RAMP to make sure that we could reach not only the industry partners, um, but also players across the uh, value chain. So that's how we were interested. Thanks a lot, Alba. Thanks for the overview. And um, maybe then uh, moving over to Paul. Um, GSK, of course, is rather a company that is uh, that people might recognize from their home pharmacies and uh, bathrooms, not least. But um, how why is GSK a part of RAM? How does this help you achieve your strategic objectives in the space? Okay, yes, sure. So, so I'd just like Albert, I'll just give you a very quick background on GSK. So you might recognise GSK's antibiotic brands. So GSK's like like actually like Centrin, it's been involved in antibiotic production since what well, after World War Two, from the likes of Glaxo and also Beecham's, which is now part of Glaxo Smith Um, so our major brands are things like amoxicillin and augmentin, which you may may have seen or you may have used actually, or your children may have used. And uh, we also have other various other antibiotic brands like Cetrin and Zinat and Keftin as well. So um, um, anti uh, antibiotics is a major part of GSK's business. Um, we are, um, as, a, as a business, we are committed to ensuring that our antibiotic production from our factories and also from our suppliers as well. And we have something like 20 internal factories and we have like 40 odd suppliers globally, including India. Um, and we are committed to ensuring that our antibiotics don't pollute, our antibiotic production doesn't pollute the environment. And so we're, we're committed to controlling and minimizing our uh, release of antibiotics into the environment. And to do that, we aim to try and meet the standards that have been set by the AMR Industry Alliance. And we've got a very strict target. We're aiming to ensure that all our sites, manufacturing sites, and our suppliers' manufacturing sites as well, are conforming to those AMR industry um, standards in terms of wastewater discharge limits and the AMR Industry Alliance Common Manufacturing Framework by the end of this year. Now, we were very interested in RAMP because of the it takes a more holistic approach than, than save the AMR Industry Alliance does. As part of the alliance, we're just focusing on our own supply chain and controlling the, um, the release of antibiotics very similar to the, the presentation that Siddhartha gave earlier. But what we like about RAMP is it takes a more holistic approach and it looks at the procurement angle, which Nikolai explained earlier. Now, how can we um, encourage um, procurers to um, um, purchase sustainably produced antibiotics? And also the solutions approach as well, involving people like academia as well, in terms of you know, what new technologies or uh, um, ways of measuring antibiotics in effluent can you know can you uh, employ to try again to tackle this issue so we quite like the the holistic approach and also also as you've seen from Siddhartha's presentation the involvement of uh, of governments uh, agencies and NGOs um, as well so that's one of the reasons why we joined um, RAMP because of the more holistic approach it's taken to try and tackle this particular issue so that's, that's, what, that's why we're involved, Nikolai. Thanks, Paul. And thanks for joining us. Um, um, Jutta Hellström of uh, Novartis, again, one of the larger brands, um, maybe a bit more well-known names. Um, what, what brings your, like, also the, the, the whole, like, let's say the corporate ecosystem of several companies and different types of engagement was what brings you into RAMP and how does it fit into your sustainability agenda? 
We have also maybe just as an addition, you come from the uh, the water responsibility. Paul comes more from the supply chain management, and AMR is work. Uh, sorry, Alba is working very much in the uh, in the AMR space itself. So we're all also looking at uh, at the challenge from your respective fields of responsibility. Yeah, thanks a lot, Nikolai. And of course, thanks a lot for um, inviting me for the presentation of RAM today. Um, yeah, antibiotics are very important also for our business. So just echoing what uh, Paul and Alba actually said for their business. Um, and Novartis is actually one of the largest manufacturer and distributor of, um, of antibiotics with our business unit, Sando. I think this is probably more familiar uh, to a lot of people. But actually for us, um, antibiotic is of course uh, also a very important uh, cornerstone when it comes to modern healthcare. We probably would not be able to have any surgery or any cancer treatment if we would not have uh, proper access to antibiotics. So antibiotics are a very important um, backbone of our business, um, not only as that for the Sando division, but um, for the whole company as itself. And we actually um, are currently developing a big AMR program for the company based on three pillars. Uh, we would like to improve the access to existing and also future antibiotics. Um, and we would of course also like to uh, provide quali uh, um, high quality antibiotics um, and um, uh, yeah, and, and which are actually produced responsibly. And we have integrated that and linked it to our ESG and environment sustainability strategy, where we also have set ourselves very ambitious target, uh, specifically when it comes to water. And Nikolai, you mentioned um, my current responsibility within the company is really around water um, and water quality pay, plays a very crucial role for our business. And we have set our targets beyond the current uh, environmental regulations, including uh, topics like um, antibiotics and effluents and um, uh, yeah, helping so that we minimize um, any risk when it comes to antibiotic um, uh, resistance. So, um, and actually the third pillar besides access and manufacturing is really that we provide the respective stewardship. Um, that we uh, provide education for responsible use. Um, so really covering uh, the full range when, when we talk about antibiotic and uh, the, the, the right uh, usage. So really bringing the right antibiotic to the right patient at the right time. And um, I think it's clear, we as a company, even if we are a big company, we are not able to solve that all by ourselves. So collaboration is crucial. And we would like to use RAMP um, really to bring all the stakeholders together on one table, discuss what is really needed um, and have the discussion with industry, with small medium enterprises, with NGOs and also with government to really um, uh, combine the forces uh, to combat uh, AMR because it's really a multi-dimensional challenge. Um, you cannot solve it just with one action. You really have to uh, collaborate um, and uh, yeah, work together to strengthen global health um, and reduce antimicrobial resistance. So this is why uh, we uh, decided to join on RAM and uh, really looking forward um, to uh, the, yeah, the future uh, impact. Thanks, thanks a lot. Um, and yeah, I think that also already served as a nice transition to, to then actually uh, lead the focus to uh, to the SDC perspective with the Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation in National Development Agency. So quite a different player in this group with also uh, obviously quite different um, objectives in how you as an organization work. Uh, so Andreas Steiner, how does this work? How does this fit into the SDC strategy, collaborating both with the private sector it's a kind of multi-dimensional animal um, between the technical supply chain issues, manufacturing, health, water. How does that fit into the Swiss strategy in this field? Yes, great. So thanks, Nikolai, uh, for having me on this on this uh, panel. Um, yeah. So why are we part of Ramp, and and how does it? Um, help us achieve our strategic ob objectives. And I, I, as you said, Nikolai, uh, 
uh, we are a development agency, so we bring kind of a quite a different angle into this into into this partnership compared to to uh, to the the company partners. Um, and it is, but it is exactly this multi-stakeholder collaborative approach that that makes RAM uh, an interesting platform. So as SDC, our, our mandate is, is to contribute to poverty reduction and sustainable development. So we have obviously very different goals. We, we do have different goals as a public actor than, than our company partners. So our aim is, uh, as an organization, is to contribute to, to both human and economic development while protecting the, the environment with a clear focus on uh, low and middle income countries. So... There are a number, you all know there are a number of global challenges out there and we can only achieve our mandate if we address some of these pressing global challenges um, that call for approaches and initiatives at global or regional scales and, and also uh, in particular also multi-stakeholder collaboration and this is where RAMP exactly comes into play. Um, so linked to AMR and antibiotics manufacturing, um, we approach this global challenge from, from both a water and, and a health angle. So from the, the health perspective, fighting AMR is one of the, the priorities of the Swiss uh, foreign um, health policy. So we, we strive to address what we call the, the determinants of health, including reducing AMR by strengthening regulatory capacities of governments, um, improving policies and regulations and, and creating incentives for reducing environmental pollution, for example, from medical product manufacturing. So we also want to mobilize other sectors uh, to work on factors that affect health through the uh, as a one health approach. So, and that's why we approach RAMP as, as kind of this nexus collaboration between health and water which makes it quite interesting. So on the other hand, then from, from more the, the water pers perspective where, where I'm coming from uh, being a program officer at the Global Water Program, we want to promote the, the responsible use of water resources through innovative water-related economic models and approaches that embrace the, the principles of circular economy. And again, that's that's very much where, where RAMP is, is also situated in. So by that, we, we, we want to contribute to transformative change for inclusive growth and adaptation to climate change, in particular also for those left behind. So with regards to the pharmaceutical sector, uh, we I guess we all agree that also the pharmaceutical sec uh, sector has a shared responsibility to pr protect water resources in its operations as a contribution to global public health and sustainable development. So emissions of active pharmaceuticals from manufacturing, they contribute to the spread of AMR and thus preventing AMR means also preventing a, a public health risk. So then we have manufacturing countries like India that, that, that produce a large share of antibiotics for global supply chains, including for Europe and of course also for Switzerland. So while then the, the problem of AMR affects all countries uh, globally, uh, the, the, this burden is disproportionately higher in low and middle income countries uh, because there the, the negative effects of AMR, they, they immediately impact the often uh, poor local popula populations and, and ecosystems. And this is situation is in these places further exacerbated by insufficient wastewater management, sanitation challenges, weak infection control and, and food, uh, food handling issues. So in some it is, it is at the end it is this combination of you know, ir irrational disposal of antibiotics through also through manufacturing uh, in, uh, combined with weak wastewater management practices in, in developing countries. Uh, that contributes to, to this unprecedented global spread of AMR. And this is exactly why SDC is engaging in RAMP, because we, we are convinced that reducing emissions from antibiotics manufacturing is part of the solution to solve this global challenge of the silent pandemic called uh, AMR. So thanks, thanks for that. Thank you very much. Thanks for the overview and uh, concise and also diverse responses. 
Um, we want to allow for Q&A. Uh, on the other end, I haven't seen too much happening in the chat. So if you have questions, I saw a few comments. We'll get back to them. If you have any comments, questions, remarks, also feedback on the session itself, please use the chat. That's the best uh, platform for us to be able to capture everything. So if you see me looking somehow into the distance, that's because I'm looking at two different screens here and trying to monitor the chat at the same time. Um, but before going to that, just very quick uh, final question to each of you, and I'll take the reverse order. But as I said, RAMP is still open for new partners, and we are actively looking for new partners, both in the implementation as donors, um, uh, different types of stakeholders, obviously. So if you were to wish, who is your dream partner who, who you would like to have in RAMP? And why would they need to, why would they join? Uh, as I said, reverse order, Andreas. Yeah, thanks for the question. I, I would not name one, one specific dream member uh, that should join RAMP because as, as, as we said, it's a collaboration between a multitude of, of stakeholders. Uh, our focus will be to engage with other donor governments in the next couple of weeks and months. Uh, and also stakeholders from, for example, the investors community to ensure the financial sustainability of RAMP over the coming years so that it can, the platform can achieve its goals. So I would say our, we, we want to have more donor governments involved in RAMP. Thanks. Thanks. Jutta, if you could choose and motivate one additional partner, who would that be and why? Yeah, I think it's it's uh, as Andrea said. There are you know so many uh, stakeholders that should be involved, but I think for for us it would definitely be the procurer side um, to really um, have a have a common standard that everybody can rely on. Uh, what is actually responsible manufacturing? How do you measure it? And how could you get incentivized for showing that you're doing uh, the right thing and minimizing AMR? So I would really like to get. A, you know, a broad perspective of the procure, um, talk to them, uh, and and hopefully um, moving in the in the same direction um, on what is necessary. Thanks, uh, Paul. Over to you. Who do you want to see on board? I think you're muted, Paul. It seems like. Sorry, Paul. It seems like you're muted. Oh, sorry, sorry, I was sorry. Yes, I'm afraid Yusser has stolen my thunder. I would have said a procurers as well. Actually, it would be good to get <laughs> the procurers on the on the on the group as well. Great, thanks. Now, I'll say a few sentences about that. I've been prompted uh, then, but uh, first, Alba, who would you like to see on board? Sure. So I'm uh, in full agreement with Andreas and with Yuta that that you know donor governments and procurers are, are super important. So to then choose another one, I think um, in a dream scenario, somehow involving the end patients and having them be aware, maybe as another stakeholder group that we haven't tackled yet that we could think about. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Yeah, that's uh, that's an important addition, uh, especially in this seg market segment compared to like prescription free medication where you kind of choose a little in, at least to some extent what you buy, uh, that's, completely different story in the in the field of antibiotics where at least hopefully you get it only on a prescription um just one sentence regarding the procurers um that's of course a key target group that um and i mentioned that in the introduction also um the network of engaged and interested procurers is actually really growing and they are a core part of ramp they you don't see them in these, like in the active partnership with also funding partners. All these companies contribute both with time and expertise and financial contribution to the project. Whereas the uh, officials in a procurement agency doing that are in that project logic, rather part of the target group who we closely collaborate with, um, but who might not be a donor and so on. This is where on the public side, actually, I think also the, the high level government uh, funding needs to go to get hand in hand with what, uh, what happens on, in the day-to-day -day reality of the procuring agencies. It's a little bit like, a bit like in the larger companies, there's corporate level and there's a little local factory floor. Um, 
spreading over this whole um, or covering this whole under the umbrella, I think is really one of the key uh, ambitions for RAMP. Um, thanks for this as an overview. Um, let's see what kind of questions we get in. I'd like to invite also Brandon Shaw, uh, the head of Shawview Consulting um, into this panel. And I think you maybe can also start with maybe introducing yourself and Shawview just briefly. I'll exactly now you're part of the panel and over to you. How does RAP fit into what you're doing before we get into the Q&A? Thanks, Nikolai. And uh, hi, everyone. I'm Brendan, Brendan Shaw. I'm the head of Shawview Consulting. Um, so we're, uh, we're actually not less from water and more from the pharmaceutical and health policy side. So uh, we're a consulting firm that works a lot with the pharmaceutical industry, pharmaceutical companies, but also other participants in the global health debate. And so I think um, one of the things we're always interested in is building new partnerships and new relationships and finding new ways to come up with solutions. And so I think coming from that health perspective into an issue that crosses environment, health and business issues has been a really interesting exercise for us. And so we're really excited to be, to be part of it. So um, that's why we're here and, and, uh, and being part of the initiative. And it's, it's great. And also get to meet lots of really good people who are involved with it as well. Um, so we've got a few minutes for questions. Uh, as Nikolai said, there's there's a the chat function there uh, for the session here. If you have a question, probably the easiest way is if you quickly type up your question. Um, one of the there's a there's a question that's been running in the chat while the session's been going. I'm not sure who's going to be best placed to answer this. It might be Nikolai or or Siddharth or someone we can we can ask that. But there's been a bit of a discussion there about. Um, the role of manufacturing as a source of discharge and pollution of antibiotics versus other sources and what's the relative importance of manufacturing vis-a-vis -vis other sources and what do we, how does manufacturing fit into the broader scope of antibiotic pollution in the environment and so i guess the question is asking how does that what's the relative importance and, and, and why manufacturing i guess is one of the things that's asked there so I don't know who's best place to comment on that, whether that's you, Nikolai, or Siddharth, or someone on the panel, perhaps. Yeah, thanks. Maybe maybe you can start, but I'd also like to forward that question to uh, to one of the industry partners, of course. But um, I think, uh, in a nutshell, yes, absolutely, there are different emission pathways. There are different. There's a there's a variety of drivers to to AMR, and that's also why they all need their specific uh tools how to work with that and to work with the manufacturing part is significantly different compared to responsible usage and even the usage side is very different if you talk about uh human health or animal health and the whole um use or abuse of uh um, antibiotics in the food supply chains um these are quite different stories requiring quite different measures where it comes together is at the end of the pipe, when we talk about antibiotics in aquatic ecosystems, then, and understand, if you take the, the, this term of the One Health approach has been mentioned, uh, one of the pillars is environmental health. And I still dare to say that this is something like a blind spot. So once we're there, of course, it's quite comparable because then it doesn't matter where it comes from. But before it gets there, and I think this term upstream solutions or upstream approach is really important, then talking about the industry emissions is, is a very important box of its own that is, requires very specific measures. And not least, because this is where we might actually face the higher concentrations that can trigger resistance compared to when we see the excretion from human society that would reach a municipal wastewater treatment plant. We would have a cocktail of all kinds of pharmaceuticals, not only antibiotics, and all kinds of persistent chemical compounds, not only pharmaceuticals. This is where it gets very complicated. And on, there's the technical aspect there, but is this really the main driver? Is this where you get the um, antibiotics concentrations that exceed the risk thresholds that trigger resistance? Um, there, I'm actually quite concerned then about the industry emissions where we have locally and peaked higher emissions compared to let's say a lower concentration cocktail with more continuity. These two types of pollutants or pollution 
cocktails have very different characteristics. Um, but I don't know, I, I'm, I'm looking at Paul now, you're the, uh, the most technical guy in this group. Uh, what would you say about that? So if you, so if you look at uh, the contribution of um, uh, patient use or even animal veterinary use compared to what's emitted from factories, you know, if you look in the scientific literature, it is thought actually the vast majority of, of antibiotics and other pharmaceuticals in the environment it actually comes from patient and veterinary use. It's been estimated that like 98% is come, coming from those sources as opposed from two, about 2% 2 or less from manufacturing sources. Um, so there's two, there's two angles to that. So if you just look at the manufacturing side of things, it's still very important to look at the manufacturing aspects because if you don't control your antibiotic releases properly in your manufacturing, you could get local hotspots of high levels of antibiotics in and around that particular factory, uh, which could then generate resistance, you know, in theory could then generate resistance, which may, it hasn't been scientifically proven definitely, then transfer into local populations. So it's very still very important to look at manufacturing um, releases. In terms of the general use of antibiotics in the population or in veterinary use, of course, the key thing there is to making sure that you're only prescribing antibiotics, you're pres sorry, you're prescribing antibiotics correctly for the treatment of bacterial infections and you haven't got indiscriminate or, or um, widespread antibiotic use, which is inappropriate. And so, uh, you know, GSK is also focusing on that angle in terms of, you know, the responsible use of antibiotics and the correct prescribing of antibiotics in the population to tackle that side of things as well as the manufacturing side. But it's still very important to look at the manufacturing angle because you could get local hotspots of um, antibiotic contamination if you don't control your antibiotics properly in your manufacturing processes. If I can just add to Paul's point that it is a very localized problem, as we've seen in a number of hotspots like the Musi River in Hyderabad, which is much documented and talked about, but um, there have been concentrations as high as, you know, ciprofloxin, which is a commonly used antibiotic. Uh, samples have been taken of local water from local water bodies, and they found the concentration to be so high that it could treat 44,000 patients, just this one drop, you know, of water that was studied in this flowing river. So it just gives you an indication of, you know, the magnitude of the problem in these local hotspots that we are trying to address. Thank yeah, you. Maybe, that. Um, maybe, um, yes, sorry, go, go ahead. No, no, just, no, yeah, just maybe an, another important thing, and I think this is also for the people on the call uh, to remember um, the disposal way. So we are here talking about the manufacturing and the and the access, but actually a high contribution is also thought coming from improper disposal. So I would would really like to recommend everybody on the call not disposing any any medicine, not only antibiotics, any medicine which is expired or not used. Do not dispose it via waterways. Um, water is not a, a, um, a path for for waste. Um, just just as a as an information as well. Um, cool. Thank you much for that. I'm conscious we're, we've got a couple of minutes left. Um, there haven't been any other questions come up on the chat. I've actually got a question for some of the panelists, perhaps, which is one of the things I really like about RAMP is that it's it's working across different sectors and bringing new partners together, um, working in different ways. And I wonder whether some of the panelists, you know, Andreas from a government point of view or some of the company people might want to talk about what it's been like working with new partners on a partnership. What, what have you found or what have you learned working with a cross sector or across taking a cross sector approach and working with different partners on, on, on this emerging issue. Maybe Andreas, I don't know if you want to kick off yeah, with a yeah. comment on that. Yeah, with well, pleasure. Thanks. Um, well, for, for us, it has so far been a very interesting process up to this stage. Um, we, you know, this, this collaboration with the private sector uh, as, you know, public private partnerships, well, that's this term exists for quite a while, but you know, really engaging in, in, in a collaborative spirit um, with a new, for us, uh, a, a new industry like the pharmaceutical sector where we haven't been active uh, uh, or where we haven't been collaborating with has been really, a, you know, it's like a, a learning journey, I guess, for all of us involved in this in this project because we constantly keep on reminding ourselves on know what are the priorities for the other uh, stakeholder and what you know why does the other stakeholder 
push for for a certain um, issue to be to be prioritized um, over over another, while the other maybe thinks um, well. That, that's less important uh, from from his point or her point of view. So I think this this finding the right trade-offs to to make things happen uh, is is quite interesting uh, and a very interesting and inspiring process. And and I think we are we are doing pretty well so far. But we also have to to say that this is only that we we are only at the very early stages in in, in this platform and in this collaboration. Um, and you know the the the, the impact uh, of ramp has yet to be uh, shown. So yeah, we might have to uh, wrap it up. I think Nicola, I'm going to hand over to you to uh, finish the session. Thanks. Yes, because I think the the system will uh, simply throw us out of this meeting room and uh, just a few minutes over. But thanks for this. Uh, also, um, just seconding what Andres just said. This is still at the very early stages. We're starting, we're kicking off. Last year has been an inception phase, not only due to the pandemic, we have worked on the method, methods and building the network and partnership. Now we're moving ahead over the next couple of weeks and months. I think you will hear much more of us. Uh, it's a th three year program to start with. I didn't say that initially, I realized. Um, so, shout out if you have anything you can follow us in the chat i've shared the um my email address on the slide you'll find the slide deck and also some additional project information in the files tab on the program website um thanks to the panelists thanks for joining thanks for supporting us in ramp um i think this is the start of a really exciting joint learning journey um but i also want to just uh advertise a little bit for the this broader perspective in, in especially now during World Water Week on Friday, there will be actually an event on water as a, or AMR as a water and wash and climate risk and how these three dimensions of water, AMR and climate actually are inter, uh, interrelated, um, including presentations from World Economic Forum uh, and a lot of other exciting organizations. Uh, John is there to see that, yes, we are working with a broader perspective. This project is specifically about manufacturing. Um, otherwise, in about one hour, we're very early during World Water Week, and one hour is actually the opening plenary, uh, not least with uh, Ms. Amina Mohammed, the Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, um, Ministerial Representation, Fridays for Futures, and many others. John is there. Stay tuned during the week, and looking forward to see you all in the chat rooms and the, the plenaries out there. Thanks again, and I hereby close this session. Thank you. <laughs>